The Igbos are known as a set of people living chiefly in southeastern Nigeria who speak Igbo as their language. Before European colonization, the Igbo were not united as a single people but lived in autonomous local communities. Most Igbo traditionally have been subsistence farmers, their staples being yams, cassava, and taro. The other crops they grow include corn, that is maize, melons, okra, pumpkins, and beans. Among those still engaged in agriculture, men are chiefly responsible for yam cultivation, women for other crops. Land is owned communally by kinship groups and is made available to individuals for farming and building. The principal exports are palm oil and palm canals, trading, local crafts, and wage labor are also important in the Igbo economy. And a high literacy rate has helped many Igbo to become civil servants and business entrepreneurs in the decades after Nigeria gained independence. It is notable that Igbo women engage in trade and are influential in local politics. Third, the Igbo of the mainland, whose tribal name means in Yoruba, the earliest people, the forest people. It is pronounced Igbo in Yoruba accent. The descendants of the Akulian Bushmen are, along with the San Bushmen of Southern Africa, the missing link in the human evolutionary and genealogical tree. These Achilleans, having evolved from the earth, lived under the earth and above it in mounds. They were integral to the ecosystem and worshipped the mother goddess. A team of researchers who made a field trip to Uguele confesses to have made some surprising discoveries. In their words, according to the book They Lived Before Adam by Professor Catherine Acholono, I quote, we found a disused cave shrine at the highest hilltop in a village located high above the territory of Uguele in Ingodo town. The shrine, which is called Isume, Frost Breath, is a place where a goddess or Vada, the mother of Father God, known to the natives as Nemchuku, my mother, the supreme being, was worshipped in the days of yore. Her name and the name of the cave speak volumes. Nemchuku, my mother, the supreme being, calls to mind the eternal mother of Father God of the Nag Hammadi, as well as Neka, and pronounced in Igbo as Neka, the supreme mother of the forest dwarfs, encountered by the immigrant Idu party in the Benin myth of origin, and confirms what all research has proved, namely, that the first God known on earth is a mother deity. Isume First breath implies by its name that this cave was the place where man took his first breath after he lost his cosmic consciousness and divine nature. End of quote. Other conclusions from the same team assert that the fact that mitochondrial DNA analysis conducted by teams of researchers from four different universities in USA placed the arrival of Homo sapiens on planet Earth between 200,000 BC to 280,000 BC. It is in the case that the Uguele Akulian Ebos preceded hybrid Adam by at least 200,000 years. From the book of Professor Ketrin Acholano, They Live Before Adam. If you go through the book, it will show you that man has lived in Uturu almost a million years ago. We are not disputing the biblical version of human creation. But she is saying that man lived in Uturu. In fact, as an undergraduate of the University of Nigeria, I was in 1977. I'm a graduate of mass communication. In 1977, I came down from Soka with my professor Mose. From what he wrote, he said that Uturu had stone artifacts were of the Achillean age. And the Achillean age was between 500,000 to 350,000 years before Christ. So man had lived in Uturu. And from the reader of Acholono's book, you'll find that most of the civilizations in other continents, they all started in Africa. And where in Africa is Uturu? Did they actually live before Adam? 
Now, all out and deeper we go. Who really are these Uturians? We need to know. So, let's find out. This cross-like junction is Okigwe Junction. Or better still, Okigwe Roundabout. From the east is road leading to Oweri. To the west is way to Okigwe, link to Uturu. The main focus of our concern. To the north is road to Umaya, and to the south is Enugu. Before now, events and history have been recorded and documentations regarding these have also been made and kept for succeeding generations to follow. Wrong or right, your guess might be same as mine. But the truth will always remain that documentations made in the past ages often depends on facts and figures on the ground or available to researchers at the time of documentation and circumstance surrounding the discoveries made at that particular time. This goes on to suggest that different factors might have played dominant role in shaping results of findings, discoveries and assertions propagated at the time of documentation more or less, not the fault of the researchers, but the availability of information they were exposed to. Luck is something that I would say that um, comes to somebody in this world. There's a purpose why God brought every person to come out from a particular place. There's a purpose why God made me a Nigerian. God has all it takes to make me to be an American or from Europe or, or Britain. But in his own infinite mercy design, he made me to come from Uturu. And as these norms and values have been passed on, like it happens that you come to face reality. Those realities are what makes somebody's town known. Either it we call heritage site, or either it's called monuments. All over the world, people travel on tourism to go and see how the old, the past, the history of the people has moved on from the primitive time to what it has been today. So even technology, the improvement in technology, people travel to still go and watch the improvement. Again, Research findings does not always stop at the documentation of any particular research team because it is often said that the eyes can only see through a visual sight, not beyond. So, we have an extremely tenable case study here, rewriting history to let the world have a better and more reliable information about the origin of the Igbos. Recently, a fresh team of researchers who did not throw away the initial findings or discoveries of other very experienced and notable historians, but worked extensively with their findings in consonance with recent discoveries for more authenticity and to further encapsulate all findings in one for better synchrony and more comprehensive understanding. The research team, which included down-to-earth specialists in research methodology, content development, African history, and experts in documentary film production, made a painstaking marathon trip to Isume Ngode Cave in Ugwele community, Uturu, and the experience was extremely expository, tasking, breathtaking, but all in all, fulfilling. First, the team visited the custodians of the cave to pay homage and to be directed or instructed on how to move, do's and don'ts, and what to expect. It was also an opportunity to know more about the existence, unique features, and importance of the cave. <laughs> Mbonyewu 
I got winning now. you I One very significant of the history of Isume Cave, the most significant, if you ask me, is about the girls that inhabited the cave, the one they call Nemchuku, who also left the cave to settle at Arochuku for obvious reasons. The strong belief in her reign, power and authority and the scriptural link to the Holy Bible in Revelation chapter 12 must not be overemphasized. Quoting Revelation chapter 12 And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travelling in birth, and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads, and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God, and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And when the dragon saw that he was cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was angry with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which kept the commandment. End of quote. Everyone in the team was in high spirit at the time of setting out towards the cave. But something happened. The rain struck. And we were wild at the timing of the rain. Exactly when we were to set out. A good thing though. It means our trip would be a success. Because the rain is always seen as a sign of success and shower of blessings. And when the wind went down, we set out, and the road, the tracks, hmm, something else. This is Ohi stream. One can actually shower here after a tiring long trek. We had to trek a very long distance covering several kilometers from Uturu Men town. You can feel the deep breath from all concerned. It's fatigue. Some are already down and out. Sanctification and cleansing by our chief priest to make the place worthy of entrance. We used a power generating set for two main reasons. To light up the cave and drive away wild animals. This is the main section of the cave, where it is believed the early men lived, the acclaimed origin of the Igbo-speaking nation. The chief priest performs some cleansing rituals for easy entrance. Everyone needed to wash his head under the waterfall to be safe from insects' bite, especially bees. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to do it.
There is a strong belief that with faith, a woman assumed to be barren can drink from this water and be able to conceive. Everyone also needed to have a feel of the ancient abode, at least to experience what it was like. None of the crew members was left out, even me. The hunters had to go first, in case some wild animals are still left in there. We were still on course at the middle of the thick forest hilltop when another rain, heavier than the first one started. We could see it raging from afar, but we were helpless. No option, nowhere to run. It was a heavy downpour that everyone had to cut from the undesired cake. Thank goodness, somehow, we were able to protect all our high-definition cameras and other delicate equipment. The Sarge took this very formidable team to Isochi, one of Igbo-speaking ancient towns. Our findings was in line with what we were looking for. Our confirmation that Igbos actually originated from Uturu. We were almost stunned at the revelation that Uturu even has a traceable history of large family expansion up to Yoruba land, Hebrew and so on. Israel. Haneba and the half with a lab on Debo. A bear has a mighty or a bangra will guell. Utulu Najikotaruchi Nutulu on Yana Panamwe. How well, Musa? Would you wear Mumun Kia Basaba? And I'm where Mumun Kia Basaba. Is Sophia. Sophia number. Most communities in Ibo land, their name are derived from Uturu. And I'm asking myself, why is it that most names in Ibo land has the same name in Uturu? 
And if you want to know where Utu people are, go to every community. If you go to every community in, uh, in Igbo land and southern Nigeria, like they said, the Omoku people are Utu people that left on traditional medicine journey to help cure diseases, to help give people rain, to help pacify the gods. And that's where anywhere you see Utu people are, they, uh, there are two sections of people in that community. There are the people that have inhibit uh, that are there who have settled. And there are other people where they give, go to to receive their power or consult the God to be able to take care of their children and their land. Those people are always custodian of the nature and culture of that particular town. Those people are true people. It is when you had moved on to a particular town and discovered the land and you settled, you come back home to take the, the a native doctor from the people to go and pacify the land so that you can build and reside it in that house. So see how the pattern of movement. It is when they continue on the journey and find any cave, underground settlement that they can go in and live, they will find a home in it. They moved here, settled at Ibuku, some settled at Inri. All of them, you'll find the hole like a form of cave where they stay. If you go further and ask them, the information they have is that they also came from Uturu. You, you, as you continue to search, you see that all of them, the little they can remember by their great-grandfathers is telling them that they are not from here, that they marched on to that particular land and they've resettled. The astrologers, they should come to Uturu. They are a way to check the wave and current of the land you are standing, what it is made up of. It is all here. If you go to uh, uh, Ngwa, you will see Uturu people. Omwa, you will see Uturu people. Um, Amokwe in uh, Udi, Uturu people. All of them are there. But people, when an empire has gone down, it is difficult for you to associate with a, a, an empire that has gone down. But now that we are saying that this world is opening up for people to identify with where they are from, a lot of people are now speaking out because it is no more time for you to say that evil, that everything that concerns our culture are evil. There are good in every person's culture. If medicine is falling back to hereditary, it's falling back to natural herbs for finding cure to major sicknesses, it means that whatever that is happening to us can as well be associated with our heritage. Finding our heritage can keep us alive. Finding where we belong can keep us alive. So this is one thing that, uh, that left Uturu and the people that are in Uturu no choice than to bring back all our brothers, all the people that have left Uturu. Even when you read further, you understand that after the flood period, the flood period is what anthropologists and historians were able to put piece and pieces with their own finding. Even the carbon reading from the stone here will tell you it's over 3 million years that people started in Uturu. In Uturu, the focus of our search, we touched on all communities and villages, and every sentence from all our respondents seemed right, that ordinarily there was no need to continue the search. But we persisted because of two basic reasons. One, we needed a more holistic and accurate information, so we had to dig deeper. And two, every community we visited provided leads for one or two other communities, where we can also get more information and discoveries. So, we visited almost all communities mentioned that has one link or the other with Uturu, and revelations were everything to write home about. Here, our experience with Uturu. Here is the Ugwe Autonomous Community Uturu. 
in a Sukwato local government area of Abia State, Nigeria. This community, from the creation of the world, was made unique by God himself. Um, Otu, Ihe Igeje Matabo, Onwere Ihe Nobu Neba, Hana Kwa Nem Chuku. That in them chukwa mbo for now bumba no mbo bumbo for where ga do we ga ga wa fwa ni ja na enye nsogbu e ji we na enye nsogbu ajo anka ajo anka ji ka kora ni then he that in them chukwa who left something ana akpo fo o fo ahun ngo do bu na ezi anye ba and e be na li bo ni ile how in how put up with you do a or found behind the boy that do. And the dad here took one, um, put on a bar, only him in a well hour, where near your farm, so get with an etch here. Or found, boy, Emma Quilly Hojo, Tokaka Gotto, yet she would be teacher. You won't need a teacher, but no, but don't need a granny, but jogging you, yeah, you know, is your waffle. And the way a bosom of fire hunting only is a yaba. So, Uncabobo, Nabania, only in DB and DB num gah, Bohaja better, book what you call Bioma. A web potaraha, Okute, Okuta hagger web potaraha, Tahagaji, Urebuja, Nobla Hatcher. Emma, I am Bopotara. Because we are going to get a lot of money. We are going to get a lot of money. We are going to get a lot of money. We are going to get a lot of money. We are going to get a lot of If you go to a place we call Isume, you will see that some people were living there. Both um, human beings during that time, both human beings and those who are spiritually half spirits were living there. It was from here that people started going from place to place. There's no place you go in this Igbo land. You will not get a name that originated from this Yuturu. I think to a lot of people, it's not questionable. I know history sometimes um, get missing, but any well, any well-informed person in Igbo land knows that Uturu is number one. You look at the land uh, mark of Uturu uh, as at today. Formerly, it was almost infinite. Formerly, we don't even have boundary with um, Arch and all these people and so on. No, but we have just left because we cannot act. we cannot manage them. Yes, it is made by God. That is why also, even though it looks like we are backward, not as at uh, 50 years ago. In fact, you come to the whole of this area, Uturu had the first secondary school. It was only later they seemed to have overtaken us, just for only five years. And after God, and Uturu restored their glory. And when you think of what is with around Uturu now, you can understand that God has already made Uturu opera. And when you look at 
around us here. Let me not start mentioning them. You know what I'm talking about. In terms of education, in terms of everything, human resources, you know that God actually has wished us to be number one. Even though we relaxed, we slacked back for about 10 years, today we are on top again. So we thank God for making us number one. The generation of Igbos came from Utru. When Utru came here, Enna, our forefather, great, great, great grandfather, when he came here with his team, nobody existed within all these environs. So from here they took off. Then started to expand. As they move, it took time. It's not just something that happened in one day. Uh -huh. So when they settled where they were, some started coming back to, to settle. So pitch themselves where they are. We had that issue make cave where people lived, the prehistoric people. Then the Anna came and still occupied that place. Some of his men, not himself. Because they spread, his children and his team spread. Some entered the caves and lived in there. I mentioned the Usume cave, I mentioned the uh, Nkumajama, I mentioned the Omamba Hill. So when they lived there, they had uh, engineers who fabricated uh, these uh, spoons you call, uh, these things you call spoons, ancient relics. They were found there. Even the government has. So dug out something, another terracotta from the soil at well. So they took it to a, a museum. It's there. So we had ancient Utru engineers. If you go to uh, if you go to Uguago, there's one type of stone, which from where they smelted iron from the stone. So those things are known there. They are still there existing. The reliefs are still there existing. We call them aga, aga. That's a type of stone. You can't, you don't use it for any other thing now. But a last day, when you fire a, a, a stone, from it you get rock, from it you get iron. With this iron, they fabricated spoons and the arrows and spears and what have you and hoes. We grew up now. All our lives as we we're growing up we started having traces of our strong belief in what makes a true person have additional value. Our people are stickler to total cultural values. History has it that our people have stood and fought with the Scottish people, fought with the Roman people. They refused any atom of change of attitude in what they believe in. It is what we are going to see. People came, destroyed the origin of man, and the few that could reach out and speak out of what is to be had made impact. Who is an Uturu man? When the missionaries destroyed everything that has to come from Uturu to say the origin of man. What document again do you need? Now we are saying, in Egypt, a lot were written about Egypt. And today archaeologists are now rewriting the entire history that have been documented before. How the mummies died, what they had and what they did not hear, because they are rewriting it by seeing a more better evidence. Now, there are information that you can use to disprove what had been documented earlier. Within the time who compiled the paper on Britannia or dictionary or whatever, when he operated, if nobody gave him access to come all the way to Uturu or access to go and use a carbon reading, dig out something from that point and to see, you wouldn't know anything. In Yobe State, a part of your best state, if you drop any pin on the ground in a particular place where you call desert, every crop does continue to balsam. Dry season, wet season. One man decided in 1993 to start digging for well and met some hardwood 
right inside the well. And was wondering, why is he meeting wood? Because when you dig a little bit of maybe 20 feet, you see fresh water. Then the man called the attention that he met something on the ground. They brought Germans to unveil the canoe. A canoe has been there since live immemorial, and there's no river. If the, the, the Israelis did not understand the topo of what happened between Egypt and this, they wouldn't have followed the pattern. They would have been displaced, is it not? But today they were able to trace Egypt because Egypt is a civilized point. So they kept those, uh, their language, kept their sites together because they were able to match knowledge with what they had before. Who had knowledge in this part of the world? It was all zero. You were conquered and conquered for life. So that's why if you say that you don't have anything within the encyclopedia and the information they have, many histories are being rewritten today. Both in India, a lot of things, facts are coming up to destroy what people have written within the preview they wrote. Now more researches. Of course, even the same dictionary and the things they wrote, they said it is still subject to future research in intellectual practice. You can finish your research and finish your book. You will stop at where your eye can control. And you leave it open for people to continue. With even science, you prove you can distort any of the, the, the information you have. If you have a, it's not hypothesis, it's total theory. We are saying that the available information today has given credence. Well, I cannot write anything and put on the internet. I have not written one. It's just because I started reading books and traditional people we meet different places going to refer to through as their home place. And we get puzzled. And then I was discussing it on NTA and some people started calling in and said, to support what you are saying, we checked on the internet and this information about your hometown due to caves. That's how information like this started coming. We're only trying to propagate what is right and it's still subject to verification and to check. And that's why I said anybody that is free should go around the world and get more facts, ask more people. You are an investigative attitude now, trying to find out more. You've gone so wide to get information beyond Uturu people. Where are their brothers anywhere? There's Uturu in Delta. They are still maintaining the same name, Uturu. In Oboduku, the same way they operate with the native doctors, they the same way our people operate with native doctors. And they always custodian of a particular thing, wherever they are. So almost all the native doctors that is scattered all over are all operate. These are people that used to worship the goddess, do the things that to keep the land together. And we're saying, if you think it's a lie, we're not saying there's any other thread that came from Uturu. These are custodians, where they came with the heritage. And that's what they disseminated around, and that's what they are known for. With the information available, facts and figures on ground, pictures and video clips to show, and the fact that opinions from all communities visited point fingers towards Uturu, confirming one link or the other with them, have wiped out any doubt from wherever that Igbos would have originated from somewhere else other than Uturu. But for so long now, this unity has remained the greatest undoing of the Igbos, because as it were, we have derailed from our basics and have failed to accept the truth and recognize the importance of our origin and heritage. So many unanswered questions have been asked. When will Igbos come together and reason as one? Brothers and sisters, now that we know the truth. Having ascertained the truth, what else is there to do or say than to extend a hand of fellowship to all well-meaning Igbos as partners in progress? As history is being rewritten, our rebirth that is worth participation, that that must be upheld. Igbos far and near, at home and in the diaspora, Uturu, your origin and ancestral homeland is happy to inform you that Nemchuku has not forgotten her offspring, 
Rather, she wishes that all her children recognize their heritage and to trace their way back home where they belong. I'm just a passage to preach this thing for people to come together and come to Uturu and go back to that cave where we all came from and honor the, the system and make it a monumental thing for, of what celebrating. That what brought us and me in particular to put money in the cultural carnival that should bring the entire Igbo people to where their beginning was. Uturu Cultural Carnival is a brainchild of world meaning Uturu people led by Chief Gregory Ike Ibe. The Omeraha One of Uturu, it is hosted on every December. The history of Uturu Cultural Carnival came as a challenge from the vision of one man to change the lifestyle of the hard-working Igbo people to a fun spot where the average Igbo man can unwind and relax with family and friends after a whole year of doing business since it is also a time when an average Igbo man seeks to reunite with his ancestral home. It was at this point that the visionary leadership of Chief Ike Ibe was moved to seek different opinion and invite different groups and friends whoever cared to listen to him talk about Uturu, the ancestral home of the Igbo nation. <laughs> The first edition, which was a huge success, initially seemed unrealistic because many did not understand the practicality of the event at that point as there was no defined mode or its non-existence in the past. Talk less of achievability, but to turn that idea that was only shared into reality. This event today can be said to be the beginning of the future of this great nation, Ndibu and Nigeria in general. As we approach the end of the year and the race towards the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ and the joy of carnivals, which can be traced back to the festival of Saturnalia in ancient Rome, it spreads through Europe and Brazil, where the festivities got mixed with the culture of the migrants, African population and the indigenous American Indians. Today, it has a global character yet to be surpassed worldwide. The inception of an organized carnival with infusion of our traditional culture and roots in Africa represent the completion of an orbit of ambulation of carnival from Europe to America and now to Africa. The Uturu carnival is stepping into its beginning phase and it's ready to become the carnival of all Africans. Surviving the outgoing year and ushering the down of another year, we are bound to witness various festivals commemorating this page. But the festivals are not reserved to the last month of the year alone, for communities all over the world are intrinsic in festivity and seek the smallest reason to be merry. From biblical times, societies have held parties to celebrate everything from birth, victories in war, victories in sports, and whatever can give an excuse for having a good time. In festivities, something can be made out of nothing. Tomatoes festival which started as a naughty child's play is today a major tourism money spinner. Think also of the Mask Festival of Venice in Italy and the Calabar Carnival Festival to mention but a few. These festivals all bring good fortune to the host cities and its people. In Uturu and the entire Igbo nation, it will be three days of reverie. 
Two sizzling days of non-stop partying, eating and drinking. Crazy, isn't it? <laughs> that is the true inner spirit of man. Live a good life and have great fun. In some countries, they take one full week of holidays. In some religions, it runs for two weeks. So, in Uturu, why not give to Igbo nation? Nigerians and a greater part of Africa as a whole are a playground where you can check in anytime you wish, but you may never wish to leave. This is the reason for the season. Let's make it worth the while. Let's roll out the drums and let the party begin in Uturu. And indeed, the entire Igbo nation. Ndibo, none. For 2009 edition, so much activities were lined up to make the carnival an enviable one. All villages arrived with their different cultural displays, then procession to Uturu Royal Country Club. Fireworks, all the various activities and merriment. A people is governed by their culture, tradition and belief systems. The dry wool that exists within a town makes fire for the indigents. A town may be very far, but it is obviously closer to some set of people. Whatever belief one has works for him. For us, Uturu is a cradle of human civilization.
Omena la name Mambo, Bo, Ibu Gasso, Coco, and Joko. But now, church annually, may, and yet, church every year. And the Mamba and I got no mumu. Open the church in Melas, no mumu, and yet, I got Gaga no mumu, I took up eight than a week. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, well, and your mother, Melala, Melala, Lala, and the man I took a mum, Melala. Oh, boy, hand them. One day, when they are lawyer, or they saw. When they are one day, you go or they saw. Or both of them. We got an an age, you get where I want, or cook any, or talk of what you shall go, Gaggy Ben, who goes to the night on your boo. You could leave it. But the little woman, no matter line, or a melusso. Okay, is it a mayor? Okay, good, a mayor. Oh, my okay, is an upper chamber. A mashah lady, she said, like Oak Hawa, no bachetta, or Boba Shagurego. Is it a two melan? Another very important revelation is the fact that Onuzo, a big family or kindred in Uguele community Uturu, is traditionally the first to eat new yam annually before every other community in Uturu. Yam is being eaten and in Uturu here you don't touch yam not until a particular community eats yam every year. They, they were the first that were used as guinea pig to test the issue of uh, testing that particular fruit that was found. And then they ate it and this group of people never died and that's why we still respect them to test the yam. There's no other place. Irijin D will ought to start. They should acknowledge the fact there are things that will show where we are. Mm. From Uturu, the team proceeded to Arochuku, where it is believed that the first goddess that inhabited the hilltop Isume Ngodo Cave in Uturu moved to. If I hear Obankuna, which is cave, only if you know Babi, if you know Babi, I would. Then they became the snow launch. I'm a kid, you know Babi. And nobody be kind. Oh, well, I wouldn't be kind of snow justice. Oh, you big bear, big bear, zede zede. The heaven and do too, big army to buy only. You got no true time. He got a family late Fabian Nabu. Who wouldn't have one out of neighbor? Then the guy is a poor lodge. My bassy lodge. My bassy was had one of that. Nri, the acclaimed ancestral homeland of Ndibu, also saw our legs as the team was on ground to find out which is which. When we discover his MNN. A show indication that the cradle of this war started 600 million years ago. Okay. I already 4,000 Kaina, no, no, 600 million years ago. And then there was a second creation, case okay, name when the explosion that exploded, and then there was this war. And not the other side of the explosion, kind of by the beginning of the war. The bomb theory doesn't have a beginning. They tell you that there was an explosion, all the entire thing in there, and then the entire place became like a mountain. Then the world started from after a while, this degenerated to the other, the other one degenerated to the other, coupled of explosion until there was water. The kind of idea does only propound. Look, I'm with evidence in their research. And now from this idea, I mentioned how to an Okigwe area. 
Now, I call then with some discovery, and we lay about some mountain and hard rock. The egg discovery about that took several years back, or millions and millions of years ago. But this is their one. Just aside the other section that says that this, the wall is about 4,000 years old, told us about the coming of Abraham and how Abraham started his own world until the coming of Jesus Christ. Next part of call was on Hafia Udumese. We were received in a grand style. They told us their own part of the story, which was in line. They added more glamour with the presence and performance of the world dancers. Excerpts from a book titled The History and the Culture of Ahafia, collected by N. E. Obuba, recounts that nearly all Ahafia villages recruited their medicine men from Uturu. The real core Igbos who are warlike, fierce, dependable, may have started from there. Then where that attribute of being um, firm, warlike, fierce, dependable, and strong-minded. Um, Gega, Lord Panta, and Lord Buku. The formation, Nehaji BDOB, one just exactly as we live. There are uh, uh, compound squares with the Oko and all those trees, one exactly in the Kanji Gwadeba. Abriba was not left out of the history making towns we visited. Having a strong ancestral link with Uturu and theirs was also a revealing experience. As a matter of fact, uh, after our people settled in here, they were very adventurous. They went to so many areas, built a lot of bonds and relationships, threaded in so many things. Like uh, during the slave trade period, the hunting took us to those areas. We built bonds, relationships in so many ways. From Uturu or Kigwe area, we combed this situation from there, and it ended us usually at Aruchuku. That was a major relationship. Another one was in the area of uh, craftsmanship. When you talk about the Ekbozo or the blacksmith trade, the Okigwe Uturu area has a linkage between us themselves and the Oka area. So the blacksmith trade trapped in those areas. There are so many other things that brought us together. Because when we came here, we didn't just stay in isolation. We started moving. We made uh, so many relationships in leaps and bounds. So whatever that was invoked then, we were part and parcel of it within this area. The team also went to Arundi Zogo, digging deep. One characteristic of the Ibo man is that anywhere he settles, he calls it his home. He invests there, develops it, even to the, to the detriment. In fact, that's a book I wrote. I said, like Ojike, we say, I have two countries. The Boman has two homes. 
two countries, his resident state and his home state. The boys in particular abandon the home state and invest and develop the resident state. Our forefathers met some original settlers and lived harmoniously well with them. However, with time, a pharaoh arose that did not know Joseph. You know what I mean? Well, when the offsprings of these original settlers grew up, they looked at, at the arrows as strangers and began to persecute them and to call them non-indigents. Other towns visited for the same purpose include Obahu, Ezinachi, Ihitehube, Umoji, and so on. Leadership has started here in Igbo land ever before the arrival of the colonial masters. So when the colonial masters came, he installed warrant chiefs, those people to work with him. That is uh, just a similar thing to what you are saying. So people lived in caves in those days until they adopted what is called settled life. They settled somewhere and then started to make temporary shelter. There are caves around here. People move from there in the olden days move from there if they you know if they want to go to market they immediately they go they, they enter that cave and move to Uturu Nkwachara to buy food after buying food they enter into it and then trek up to that place and then go to Asian Nation and Oge. The cave is still there. I saw it during the boundary demarcation between Abia and uh, Imo. An able person is hard working. Wherever he goes, he establish. And he will make a home there. He will fight to become somebody. That is the nature of an uh, Igbo man. And uh, he struggles a lot. He doesn't look uh, si sideways in order to achieve uh, success. The history uh, stated that Uturu, Nachi, uh, Ebagro, Ihu, they started uh, their journey from somewhere. Some say uh, Oposi, others say Ohafia and Afibo. When they were marching, they came to Uturu and settled there for some time. Then uh, Uturu found out that uh, Uturu is a suitable place for him to relax. He lived uh, there and the others marched forward to Ihube. That is uh, Ebagro, Ihu and uh, Nachi. We were also opportune to be with high profiled Uturians who brought themselves together under the umbrella of Uturu Development Union, UDU, New Jersey branch, USA, in an event they hosted in 2009, in a bid to accommodate contributions from Uturians in the diaspora. Igbos, we are a blessed generation. Igbos, we are very strong and industrious. Igbos, we are the wise ones. Let us act accordingly. Long live Ndibo, the wise from the east. Long live Africa. Long live all the peoples of the world.